This is the section 9.2 day 1 video on vertex form. We're going to continue to talk about quadratic equations here. Um, in 9.1 we dealt with standard form. So vertex form is a different way to write a quadratic equation. Uh, we're going to identify the vertex of a parabola as a maximum or minimum. And then uh, we're going to rewrite a parabola from vertex form to standard form. In part A here, uh, it's important that we know how to do uh, this skill of multiplying two binomials together using foiling um, because that's going to come in handy for us um, later on in this lesson. So we need to be able to do this. So that's why it's a review. Alright, so we have in the first one x plus 5 times x plus 1. So remember that when we FOIL uh, the F stands for first, the O stands for outer, the I stands for inner, and the L stands for last. Alright, so the F stands for multiply what's first, the, the first term in, um, for each of these factors, multiply them together. So X times X gives us X squared. All right, and then the O, the outer, outer term, so 1 times x, that's 1x or a positive x. The inners, multiply the inner terms, so 5 and x. You multiply those together, you get 5x. And then the last terms. 5 times 1 is a positive 5. Alright, and then go ahead and just combine like terms. So we have x squared. We have a, we have a positive 1x and a positive 5x. That's going to give us a positive 6x. And then plus 5. <coughs> okay. Um, <coughs> what I want you to do right now is hit pause. And I want you to do this, try this second one on your own. Okay, so for that second one there, you should have gotten an answer of x squared minus 3x minus 10. Alright, to the third one now. So we have x plus 3 squared. So what we want to do here is rewrite this as x plus 3 times x plus 3. Okay, that's what x plus 3 squared means. Alright, and now we're going to FOIL. So first times first, that's going to give us x squared. The outers, so x and 3 gives us a positive 3x. The inners gives us uh, 3 times x is 3x. And then last times last gives us uh, 3 times 3 is a positive 9. Combine like terms, so we have x squared plus um, 6x plus 9. Okay. All right. Now for the last one, uh, again, go ahead right now and hit pause. And I want you to try it on your own and then check your answer. Okay, so remember to rewrite that as x minus 1 times x minus 1. And then you should have gotten an answer of x squared minus 2x plus 1. So if there's any issues with this one or this one, uh, we can go over those in class. All right, so now um, for, our, for the lesson on vertex form here. All right, so for the following quadratic and vertex form, 
So here's what vertex form is. f of x equaling a times x minus h squared plus k. I'm going to graph and answer the following questions. Okay, so uh, first off, we want to identify what the vertex is. All right, so this negative 1 right here, well, I'm sorry, let me take that back. Let me write h comma k, all right? That's your vertex of the parabola. All right, and so um, when you want to identify the vertex from vertex form, the opposite of what you see here. So you see how we, that's a negative one. The opposite of that is going to be the x coordinate of the vertex. So it's going to be positive one. And then the number that you see here, your k, that is going to be the y coordinate of your vertex. So negative one. All right. So uh, if you have something in vertex form, the x coordinate of the vertex is the opposite of what you see here the y corner of the vertex is exactly what you see there. All right. Um, now, let's plot that point. So 1, negative 1 is right there. So that's the vertex. Is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? And the answer is it's a minimum. How do we know that? Well, what is our A? our a is understood to be a positive 1 there. All right, so um, since your a is greater than 0, the parabola is going to open up. All right, and so if it opens up like that, that vertex is a minimum. Uh, it's a minimum. And what would the minimum value be? So the minimum value would be negative 1. All right, it doesn't ask us for that, but that's been something we've been talking about. Okay, now it says identify the A term. So A equals, so our A is equal to 1. All right, now plot your vertex and move your A from the vertex. So um, I'm going to go up 1 over 1. So it's going to put me here. Okay. Now remember that we have a vertical line running through the vertex. That's the um, axis of symmetry. So if the ordered pair 2, 0 is a point, we know then 0, 0 also has to be a point. Okay, so now we can connect. And our graph's going to look something like that. All right. Now it says estimate the location of the zeros. Well, the zeros are the x-intercepts, so it's where the graph crosses the x-axis. So it does that at 0, 0, this point right there, and at 2, 0. <clears throat> All right. The y-intercept, that's where it crosses the y-axis. So the graph crosses the y-axis um, at the origin, 0, 0. All right, now we want to rewrite the quadratic into standard form. So it's in vertex form. So we, we want to rewrite it in standard. So we have f of x equaling, so x minus 1 squared. I'm going to rewrite that as x minus 1 times x minus 1, what we did in our warm-up. And then don't forget to put the minus 1 at the end. All right, so we're going to FOIL. First times first, that's x squared. Then the inners, I'm sorry, um, the outers. So 
So we're going here and here. That's a negative x. The inners, negative x. And then last, we have a positive 1. And then don't forget the minus 1 at the end. So f of x equals x squared. So you have a minus x, minus x, so it's a minus 2x, and then 1 uh, and a negative 1 cancels, so you have 0. So notice that we don't have a c term here. Your c is equal to 0. And remember that your c is equal to your y-intercept. So it makes sense that, you know, we said that we had a, that the y-intercept was 0. Um, and then when we put it in standard form, our c was 0. Okay, so kind of pulling a lot of things uh, together. All right, number two. Uh, again, same thing was the first one, so let's identify the vertex. So remember, the x-coordinate of the vertex is the opposite of what you see there. So we see positive 2, take the opposite. So the x coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative 2. And then the y coordinate of the vertex is exactly what you see there, negative 3. Okay, and so that's why we call this vertex form, because it's easy, just by looking at it, it's easy to tell right away what the vertex is. All right, so that's how they get the name. So let's plot this point, negative 2, negative 3. All right. Um, is this vertex a maximum or a minimum? Again, this is going to be a minimum. Why? Because it opens up. The parabola opens up because a is greater than zero. So our a, again, it's not there, so it's understood to be one. So a one is greater than zero. So that means our parabola is going to open up. And then the vertex right there would be a minimum. And the minimum value would be negative 3. All right, identify the A term. We already did that. We know that A equals 1. All right, so now plot your vertex and move uh, your A uh, from the vertex. So remember, that's your rate of change from the vertex. So up 1 over 1 puts us, you know, right there. And then imagine we had... Axis of symmetry. So this would also be a point. All right, and then we're going to connect. All right. Now we want to estimate. So there's your sketch of the the parabola. Now estimate the location of the zeros. That's the x-intercepts. That that's where the graph crosses the x-axis. So it looks like right here oops, and right here. So what are those points? Uh, well, it looks like if we were just estimate, negative 4, 0. And let's just estimate that to be negative 1, 0. Um, the y-intercept, where does the graph cross the y-axis? Let's just say that that is uh, 2, 0, 2. So these are just estimates, all right? So that this isn't exact. All right, so that's going to be our C. All right, so... Let's rewrite the uh, quadratic in the standard form. So f of x equals uh, x plus 2 times x plus 2 minus 3. All right, so 
I'm going to go a little bit quicker. Uh, first times first, it's going to give us x squared. Then the outers here, that's a positive 2x. The inners here, positive 2x. Last, positive 4. And then don't forget to subtract 3. So we get x squared plus 4x um, plus 1. Okay, so we were a little bit off with um, our y-intercept. We estimated the y-intercept was 2. Based on this equation, uh, you know, your c would be, or your y-intercept would be 1. Okay. Alright, for number 3, what I want you to do is to try this one out on your own. Go ahead and hit pause, and then once you're finished, resume play and check your answer. And here is the answers for 3. <clears throat> Alright, number 4. Identify the vertex. So... The x coordinate of the vertex is the opposite of what you see there, so it's going to be negative 1. And the y coordinate of the vertex is going to be exactly what you see there. That's 4. Alright, is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? In this case, we have a maximum. The parabola opens down. because a is less than 1. So you see how our a is negative there. So that means it's going to open down like this. So the vertex is going to be a maximum point, and the maximum would be 4. All right, so your a is going to be negative 1. So let's go plot these, we'll plot the vertex. So negative 1, 4 is right there um, and then down one over one so uh, use your a to get the point to the right so negative one so remember slope equals rise over run equals negative one over one so I go down one to the right one puts me there so then here's my axis of symmetry And I know that this point also is on the parabola. Okay. Alright, so now we want to estimate the location of the zeros or where this parabola crosses the x-axis. So it looks like it's going to cross at negative 3, 0. That's this point right there. And this point right here, that's 1, 0. Again, this is just an estimate. Um, the y-intercept where does this graph cross the y-axis? So right here. So that's going to be three, 0, 3. Alright, now rewrite the quadratic in the standard form. Now you got to pay attention to this one with this negative sign. So we have x plus 1 times x plus 1 plus 4. Alright, so put the negative there and then go ahead and FOIL this. Put it in parentheses, the whole thing. So x times x gives us x squared. The outers gives us a positive x. Multiply the inners, you get a positive x. And then what's last? 1 times 1 
gives us 1. Put that all in parentheses and then add 4. All right, that's super important to do that. All right, now combine like terms inside the parentheses. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 and parentheses plus 4. Now, why was it important to keep this inside parentheses? Because now you distribute the negative to each of these terms. Notice I do not distribute it to the positive 4 at the end. So we have f of x equals negative x squared. So then you have a negative 1 times positive 2x, that's a negative 2x. A negative 1 times a positive 1, that's a negative 1. And then plus 4 at the end. And then go ahead and combine these terms. So you're going to get, come up here, negative x squared. Oops. I'm running out of room, guys. I'm not going to be able to fit it. Um, sorry. I have to go to other places. Let's go over here. So f of x equals negative x squared minus 2x and then a negative 1 plus 4 is a positive 3. Alright, notice your C was 3. So that was a good estimate of our y-intercept, which was also 3. Alright. Alright, and then finally number 5, you're going to do this one on your own. So go ahead and hit pause right now. Um, finish it and then uh, hit resume to check your answer. All right, and there's the answers for number five. Again, if you have any questions with this, we can go over it um, to begin class. All right, so that's nine point. What was it? Nine point two. Uh, day one video on vertex form.